Good morning. Lord bless you. We are glad that you've tuned in with us this morning. Across the internet, trust that you've had a great week this week. God has been good to you. I want you to know we love you this morning. Appreciate so much you're tuning with us. Got an exciting message this morning. Who's your friend? Uh, some of you across that internet this morning, you are needing a friend by right now. You're in some places where you just really need a friend. Uh, I want to introduce you to one this morning. Book of Genesis, the 18th chapter. We're going to read verses 1 through yes. 5. Would you read it with us this morning? And the Lord appeared unto him, this is Abraham, in the plains of memory, and he sat in the tent of door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground. He said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant, not a little water. I pray you be fetched and wash your feet. Rest yourselves under the tree, and I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts, after that ye shall pass on. But wherefore are ye come to your servant? And they said, So do as thou hast said. Father, thank you this morning for a word that challenges our hearts. Thank you for a word this morning that can give us some perspective on life. Ask you by the anointing of the Holy Spirit to uh, touch our hearts today. To each one of us, you're going to talk a little bit differently. Uh, to each one of us, Lord, you've got maybe a little different message. Uh, but all of it, Lord, is through your word this morning. And by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we simply ask, uh, open our hearts to what you have for us today. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory for it. For we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Uh, who's your friend? If I was to ask you that this morning, what would you say? What name would you give? Uh, what what name would you put on that statement this morning? Well, this is my friend. Uh, it was well, uh, we, we come across people, we meet people, and they say, well, this is my friend. Uh, Sometimes we even have, well, who's your friend? Uh, they, they don't get introduced. So, who's your friend? Uh, uh, so, but what is a friend this morning? If you, if you think about it, what is a friend? What would you classify as a friend this morning? A, a friend is a person who holds affection, esteem, uh, who holds this one respect for another person. Uh, that's a friend. Uh, a friend this morning uh, is someone who knows you and yet still likes you. <laughs> a friend this morning is someone who is there when you need them? Somebody that you can trust. Somebody you can depend on. Somebody that you can tell uh, things to and you know they keep it in confidence. In other words, you can trust them. Uh, I'm talking to a friend this morning. We all enjoy and need friendship this morning. Uh, Neil and Gary was my next door neighbors, two boys about my age. And Neil was a little bit older and Gary was a little bit younger than I was. Uh, they lived right next door to me. Across the street, uh, there was Kay, Patricia, and Dee, uh, three sisters. And then right behind us uh, in the neighborhood, uh, all just within short walking distance was Janice Lee. Uh, who, uh, and up to about 10, 11 years old, uh, we were playmates. We, we hung together. It was, a, it was a neighborhood gang. And just uh, we just enjoyed this innocent, healthy fellowship and friendship. Uh, rode bikes, scooters, played all kinds of games, did all kinds of things, but, just, but mostly enjoyed one another's company. Uh, we'd help one another with the chores and each one would have to do. It was a wonderful time, a wonderful childhood. By the time I got 14 years old though, Jay and I started being best friends. And uh, from that moment on, uh, that has now lasted 64 years, uh, we have been friends. We've had uh, a friendship. Uh, it's been a life that we've enjoyed, uh, life together, doing life together, and uh, still best friends this morning. Amen. I don't know what it'd be on this fast trip tonight, uh, but we're going to still uh, hang together. Amen. Uh, here's what Proverbs 27 9 says Ornament and perfume rejoice the heart, so does the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. Amen. Let me give you a translation of that this morning. 
the more she counsels me, the sweeter she gets. <laughs> it's good to have somebody that can speak into your life, uh, encouragement. Somebody, there's times, I'll tell you, there's times she could have absolutely given up on me. Mm. She could have broke my spirit. She could, she could have ever absolutely just wiped me out. But there was always a counsel of, of sweetness, of goodness, of, of belief, of faith, of trust. Uh, uh, it, it's made life wonderful to have somebody that can speak into your life uh, something right. good. Uh, we always hear something bad. We always hear from the boss or uh, somebody that don't that like, but they have somebody that's constantly uh, with you speaking in your life something good. That's a wonderful thing. Uh, right. uh, the Bible says this morning that we were made uh, the, not well alone, but to dwell one with another. Genesis 2 18 says we were not made to live alone. Uh, it's good to have somebody that you can share life with. Uh, we were created in the image of God. That also includes desiring uh, uh, and enjoying friendship. We need good, strong, healthy uh, friendship that helps us mentally, emotionally, physically. It's good for you to have a, a friend this morning and instead of living in some type of isolation as a hermit, uh, but to have some friendship contact uh, with somebody that you can enjoy. But what about friendship with God? What about friendship with God? <laughs> you know, a lot of times we look at God as our creator and he is that. We look at him as our savior and he's ever been of that. We look at him this morning uh, as the maker of heaven and earth and he's all of that. But how many times uh, have we looked at God as our friend? We've considered God to be our friend. What the Bible says in the, uh, Proverbs 18, 24, Jesus is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. One who this morning loves you, helps you, blesses you. One this morning you can depend on any time of day and night uh, will always be there for you. Abraham is called the friend of God three different times. Jehoshaphat in his prayer in 2 Chronicles uh, 27 uh, said, Art thou not, art thou not, are not thou our God who did us drive out the inhabitants of the land before the people of Israel and give us the, the seed of Abraham thy friend forever. Amen. How would you like to be called God's friend forever? <laughs> I, 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 I tell you, that, that would uh, be something to have God call you friend forever. Uh, God himself called, said to Israel in Isaiah 41, 8, uh, but thou, Israel, art my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. That's right. Second James, the 23rd verse says, And the scripture was fulfilled, which right. said, Abraham believed God. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. That's right. How would you like to walk into the workplace? Here comes, here comes that guy that's the friend of God. <laughs> Uh, you talk about influence, you talk about a witness, uh, a friend of God. Jesus said, John 15, 14, uh, you know, my friends, if you do whatsoever, I command you. Then verse 15, uh, uh, he, he gets a little further into that and says uh, this, henceforth I call you not servants, uh, for the servant knoweth not what it, the Lord doeth, uh, but I have called you friends uh, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known to you. You think about that this morning now. The plans, the secrets, the things that are going to happen in the world. He made that known to the disciples. He shared with the disciples. Uh, he took them from a level of servants. And that day, a uh, servants, uh, uh, they had to obey and, and to avoid punishment. Yeah. But Jesus brought them into a level of friends where they wanted to do his command, wanted to walk with him because he was so close to them and they were so close to him. Uh, what's the difference between a, an acquaintance this morning and a friend? All of us have got acquaintances. All of us have got some type of acquaintance at work, or even in the church place here. But what's the difference between acquaintances and friends? Uh, acquaintances are people who know us on the outside, on the surface. They have a, just a superficial relationship with us. Uh, they know about you, but they don't know you this morning. Uh, but with friends, we share 
what we're going through to one another. We're able to sit down with them and tell them the joys, the sorrows, the disappointments, uh, the hurts, the failures, the mess ups, the doubts, the fears, the, the list can go on. You're able to share with somebody who's a friend this morning uh, the secret places of our lives. We can take the friend into those places and, and it's good to have somebody that you can do that with this morning. Uh, all the way to the innermost level of where we live. Uh, that's what Jesus did. He took them from the level of acquaintances, uh, from the level of servants, uh, from the level of just ordinary people. He brought them up to uh, that innermost level of friendship and began to share with them what God was getting ready to do, where things were at, what the kingdom of God was all about. More than that, Jesus shared with them the struggles he had his own emotions, his own feelings. Uh, as soon as they had entered into the Garden of Gethsemane, somebody, Jesus took Peter, James, and John. Yeah. And there's what he said. He said, my soul was overwhelmed uh, with sorrow to the point of death. He said, stay here and keep watch. What kind of transparency, honesty, openness, uh, there he is in love this morning when you love somebody, when you care about somebody, when you just want to share a uh, life with them because they're so close to you. They're the intimacy uh, in the relationship. Uh, and, uh, uh, you want to just share yourself with another human being, the act of removing all facades, uh, put-ons, uh, all fakeness, all pretense, uh, all, all false notions. And get to where you're really at and share it with another person. I'm going to tell you, it's an incredible thing. It's an incredible thing to have somebody share with you their heart, their feelings, their struggles, their doubts, their fears. I'm going to tell you, that is a sacred trust. Don't buy it. When somebody unloads their heart to you, be kind enough not to betray it. Be uh, honest enough to... Keep that confidence. And, uh, it's a sacred thing this morning. It's an incredible thing to, to have somebody be able to share that with you. The Lord Jesus with his disciples had that kind of love. Uh, he had a heart that was a pure love. Uh, have you ever thought this morning that's where you and I live? That's where we live this morning, is that heart issues. Uh, all the outward things kind of follow along where our heart is. Uh, uh, but what's in your heart is what you think, where you live. Uh, it's what your uh, uh, thoughts are. It's what your desires are. Uh, that's in that heart. Uh, all the other parts of us follow along. But here's the sad fact of the matter this morning. For many Christians, they, they've lost the friendship that they once had with the Lord. Uh, there was a time when they had a closeness, uh, an intimacy with the Lord. Uh, uh, there have been many this morning who uh, have been so close to the Lord, and yet as a culture begin to bend for their lives, uh, begin to uh, uh, attract them with all kinds of attractions uh, uh, that distracted them on every side. Uh, the more intense they got, the more uh, uh, luring they got, more addicting they became, uh, uh, more exciting. It seemed like they would pull one way or another to a, a different place. Uh, to avoid being caught up in those things this morning, you've got to intentionally keep your mind and your heart and your place on God. Paul in Galatians, the third chapter, verse 1 said this, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is at the right hand of God. Uh, verse 2 says, set your affections on the things above, Amen. not on the things of earth. So we have two words here, seek and set. <laughs> seek and set this morning. Our mind is to be set on God as we begin to seek Him, set our mind on Him. Uh, in other words, our interest this morning flows to where our attention goes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Your focus this morning. Your interest flows where your attention goes, whatever your that's attention right. goes. That's where people, uh, NASCAR, sports, you name it, uh, that captivates a person's attention, uh, their money, their time, their interest, everything goes in that direction. It's all like the temperature of your house this morning. Uh, that thermostat that's on your wall in the house, uh, uh, as you set it in a position, that heat or the air begins to follow what that thermostat is on. The thermostat sends a signal to your uh, furnace or to your AC uh, uh, that 
This person wants 75 degrees in the house. That might be, well, no matter what it is, that might be 30 degrees uh, on the outside of the house, but on the inside, that person said, look, we want 75 degrees, for my wife be 85 degrees. And uh, so, uh, uh, that, that's what I want. And, and when you set that thermostat, the heat uh, uh, activates and the heat is brought up to 75 degrees. Or if it's air conditioner, uh, the AC comes on and it activates and sets it at 75 because that's where the thermostat is set. And everything else follows the signals. It's the same way with you and I this morning in a sense. Uh, uh, your focus goes to where your attention is set. What have you set your attention on? Now you have purposely set your attention on the Lord this morning because you're in the house of the Lord. That's a wonderful thing. There's thousands this morning that could be in church all over the world, but they chose not to set their attention on God. That's right. That's the difference this morning. That's right. It's where we set our attention, our focus goes. And when you first got saved, remember when you first got saved, many of us we was absolutely blown away that God would love us, that God would forgive us, uh, that God would come into our heart, our life, live with us, uh, save us, forgive us, and redeem us, uh, uh, would bring us into his family. It was an exciting, a very exciting time in our lives. It was very real to us. It was a, something that was real uh, because you had a whole new life. You knew you wasn't in the same direction you used to be. Uh, right. And uh, we couldn't wait to get to the next service. We couldn't wait to get into the worship service. It was, it was just so real. We, we found something new, exciting that was real. Our affection was set on more. But as we began the journey through our Christian life, uh, over the years sometimes, it's easy to get caught up in where something begins to happen, where once we had the experience of, of just every service being alive, and just uh, uh, no matter who was preaching, no matter what song they sang, it just sounded uh, like every last one of them spoke to us, and we got something out of it, it was just something ministry to it, the word seemed sort of life-changing. Uh, uh, but in that process, over the years, we learned to do church. Yeah. We learned how to come into the church, uh, to go out, we knew who was going to do what, what was going to take place, and it seemed like uh, we would do that every week, every service, uh, uh, it's the same process and the same thing we go through, we learn how to do church. Now we go physically into the church, but spiritually will be checked out. Yeah. Spiritually checked out. I, I, I tell you, I want to worship the Lord. I, I've, every one of the songs we sing, I've sung thousands of times. Uh, but I still want to sing. I still want to worship. I still want the Lord to know I need Him this morning. Uh, right. It's one thing to come in and get checked out spiritual on your iPhone, get checked out on the to-do list, checked out on the places to go, check out. I've heard this all over before, uh, time and time again. What's happening when you do that? What's happening when that takes the mindset? Well, we change the thermostat. Mm. Well, yeah. we used to be set on uh, the Lord. Uh, the focus was on Him. Now is other uh, things that have invaded, taken up our time. In other words, we've changed what feelings uh, uh, of our heart, of our soul, of our thoughts, uh, of our desires. Uh, here's what First John five twenty one says. Uh, now here, John is speaking to Christians. He's not speaking to the heathens. He's speaking to Christians. Uh, he says, "Little children." Keep yourselves from idols. <laughs> now why would John have to tell the early church uh, uh, to keep from idols? Because there was idols, things that the, anything that would take the place of God in your life is an idol. Anything that comes before the Lord is an idol. So John said, be careful uh, not to let anything come uh, become more important to you than God. Uh, uh, we need that in the day. We need to understand that idols are anything we put first. In the place of God. That's right. And this morning you chose to be here. You put him first in your life this morning. What did God? If, if everybody in the community this morning God, was to put first God in life, we don't have enough churches to hold it all. That's right. All of them this morning. Uh, our text this morning shows us that God really wants our friendship. He really wants to have a relationship with us. Uh, it was the Lord himself who appeared to Abraham there in the plains of Mary. He came to, he came to Abraham. God really comes to you and I on different occasions, uh, daily opportunities to get to know him. Uh, times when uh, we're going through struggles and need a friend, he's there. So sad in fact. We don't always reach out to him. The second thing is the Lord appeared to Abraham to strengthen the relationship they had. The Lord, the Lord wanted to get closer to uh, Abraham. He wanted Abraham to draw near to him as he drew near to Abraham. He wanted a special intimate relationship with Abraham. He wants the same thing with you and I today. 
right. Amen. the experience of Abraham, the experience of Jesus with the disciples, and you study them in the gospel, how close he was with them, and what a relationship and friendship they had. He wants the same thing for you and I. It tells us that God really wants a relationship, really wants a friendship with you and I this morning. Well, how do you make that happen? I believe it's time. I believe it's availability. I believe it's honesty. I believe it's obedience. I believe those four things that you begin to oh, operate in them in your life. Uh, and you begin to take time for God. You, you begin to put him as a priority. You begin to uh, be available to whatever he's got for you. You begin to be honest with him about what's going on in your life. Uh, and you begin to follow up in obedience. I'm going to tell you, you'll have a friendship. You'll have a relationship with the, right. with the Lord. Abraham... Uh, uh, took time as the Lord came to him the, there on that plains of Maim uh, Abraham is sitting in his tent and, and, and you, you know but verse 2 he's got his head bowed he must have been praying because the Lord had just spoken to him a few days earlier and weeks earlier about his son Ishmael and uh, Ishmael's not going to be the promised son and I, I imagine that should shook Abraham to the core because he put all his time, his attention uh, uh, on Ishmael. He thought that was it because days old age and he think this is it. And so he, he has really got his heart set uh, on Ishmael. He loves Ishmael. And here comes this message. He's not the promised son. You're going, your wife's going to have another son. And, right. and so I can imagine uh, uh, Abraham's taking time as he, uh, through the course of years, and it's a hot part of the day. So he come in out of the heat a little bit. He said, he's got his head down. He's, he's wanting to talk to the Lord. Lord, well, tell me a little bit more of this, what you're planning. I, I don't understand. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how this is going to happen. I, I don't know how this is going to take place. I, Sarah and I are all past uh, childbearing age. And I don't know how this is going to work. Uh, you can imagine him praying. Well, the Bible says when this tree walked up, he looks up. And he sees those three there. Well, the story is this morning that Abraham was setting aside time for meditation, prayer. It's when you take time this morning to spend some time in meditation and prayer, uh, God, God's going to answer that. He's going to come. Uh, Abraham must have been uh, uh, really need some answers. God will give you some answers. Uh, uh, and this, the point is this, spending time in prayer and meditation is all it takes to get God in that place with you that you have need of. The second thing in this is that uh, a way to become a friend of God is through service and ministry to others. Service and ministry to others. Find a need and fill it. There's yeah. plenty to do if you don't care who gets the credit. There's plenty to do in ministry anywhere. Amen. Uh, and Abraham is a, a, a wonderful, strong example of one who uh, cared about serving others. Remember, he was one of the most powerful sheiks in Canaan, Abraham was. One of the most powerful sheiks in Canaan. Uh, and yet when he saw these three men, the Bible said he lifted his head and he goes and runs to them, bows down in, a, in, in a humility and humbleness and, and uh, just offers them his home, offers them water uh, to drink, uh, water to wash their feet, that brings them into his house, sets them down, and runs and prepares a meal for them. Now, he didn't have to do that. He could have just let them pass on by. He could have ignored them. Uh, they ignored him. He could have called a servant. But he didn't. Here's a man who's personally involved in strangers that had just come walking by. Hmm. But he knew that here was men that had just come uh, across that desert. They was tired. They was thirsty. They was hungry. They was dirty. They needed some attention. And here's one who could have just blown it off. <laughs> I don't need to get involved in this. But took the time to run to them, offer them what he had. Uh, Abraham bowed and showed the humility and courtesy. Sought to help spend time with these uh, three men. Uh, I tell you, if you look at this this morning, Hebrews, the third chapter, thir uh, second verse, the thirteenth chapter, said, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, whereby some have entertained angels. I know forget the night that Waffle House, after Jean passed in, yeah. took Mary to the Waffle House, before I took her back to the base, went back to the base. Uh, 
And we sat in there, if I ever was a time, I knew that there was an angel that was going to sit right across from us in there. And what she did that night, uh, uh, when Mary and I left, it was a confirmation to Mary. I don't have to worry. God's got this thing. He's going to help me. Amen. He's going to take care of me. Uh, you never know who you're around. And, and always uh, uh, the possibility you could be entertaining angels that uh, God is sending your way. Abraham did the best he had, laid everything out, went done it himself, first of all in. Uh, and the world is driven today by selfishness. Mm -hmm. Sad to say, uh, for the most part, uh, there's a selfishness. Uh, there's more selfishness behind the motivation that is behind all sin, no matter what sin is this morning. It's, it's the motivation for the selfishness. Uh, when Jan and I got married, our lives became entwined. We became one. Uh, everything I had was her, and everything she had was mine. We, we shared, we committed our lives together all through these years. It has been a commitment. There's been no room for selfishness in a marriage. There's no room this morning for selfishness in, in, a, in a good marriage. Uh, so it is with a relationship between you and God this morning. When you and I got saved, uh, he bore our sins upon Calvary, saved our soul. Uh, this morning, the Bible says we ought to live for him, no longer for ourselves, but for him. It says in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, verse 15, uh, that, and he that died for all, uh, that they which live should not live Amen. unto themselves, but to live unto him who gave Amen. his life to them. This morning, the, the Lord has been a friend to us all of our lives. I want to tell you this this morning. I don't care if you're saved or unsaved, God has been a friend to you. Amen. All of your life, I don't care how old you are, God has been a friend to you all of your life. Uh, whether you uh, recognize it or not, real friends this morning cannot be separated by politics or religion, success or failure, strife or contention, promotion, or position. Right. Real friends can't be separated this morning by slander, gossip, faith, Man. fear, fame, or fortune. The only one that can go through all that this morning and stay friends with you is the Lord Jesus Christ. He died for you. Amen. He gave his life for you. Uh, uh, he couldn't give no more for you than what he's given. The Bible says nothing can separate you from the love of God. Yet let me ask you this morning. Who's your friend? Yeah. Who's your friend? Who, who, who would somebody say, well, I know they're a friend of God. I know, I know they're God's friend. How many of your workers, co-workers, your family members could say that about us this morning? Yeah? They live so close to God that, that God is on their mind that they are friends with God. Or are we just technically this morning associated with the Lord? Are we just technically uh, associated with the things of God? Or are we all in with Him this morning? So you're missing the best friend in the world if He's not uh, in that Amen. first place with you. You're missing, him, missing the best friend you could ever have. Malachi 3, 7 this morning says, Return to me and I'll return to you. Don't care how far you're away from God this morning. Those, by the way, of the internet this morning, maybe you are so far from God. You wondered if you could ever get back. You, maybe you've never known him. The Bible says, you turn to him, he'll turn to you, my friend. Uh, don't care what condition you're in. Don't care what you're going yeah, through this morning. Don't care how you're living. Uh, if there's a desire in your heart to know God and become friends with the God, he'll become friends with you. Amen. Why don't you let him help you this morning? Why don't you just let him touch your life today? He can change everything in a moment of time. Would you pray with me? Father, we're so thankful this morning, so grateful today that you love us, and you saved us, you gave your life for us, that we might have life in heaven more than one day. And I pray that that one Lord listen to that internet this morning, they, they're without a friend, they don't have a friend. They, they wonder if they could ever have a friend. They're in a bad place this morning. They're going through a bad time. Let them know there's a friend this morning that sticks close to their brother that loves them this morning. And let them find you today as their very best friend. And we'll thank you for it. But we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We love and appreciate you so much this morning. God bless you.